Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 38 of Forgecraft, hanging out with T-Love. T-Love, what's up? What's up? Uh, you want me to automate something? Yes, we need to get automated crystals going because... Yeah, because you keep draining all our power like a crazy man? We talk about me draining all the power, you're the one messing with spawners. You're the one who, like, broke our sugarcane automation, and now your other power system doesn't work. The crystals are supposed to be a supplement to that, not, you know, all by itself. Uh, yeah, excuses, excuses, excuses. Yeah. That's right. Did you run our uh, quarry while we were gone, too? That could have caused nope. a... No? Nope. All right, well, our crystal's dead again, and, and yep. T-Love wants me to fix it. AKA, we need to get an automated way of making more of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. we got the we got the resources to make awesome purified, super amazing crystals, right? Um, how many resonating? So we've got eighty four resonating ore, which is not a huge amount. It's thirty per crystal. So we okay. almost have enough for three. We definitely have enough for two. Almost enough for three. Um, but I am thinking. So I do have some thoughts. Mm-hmm. Do tell. There might be a way to completely automate this thing. I think it'd be pretty sweet. I've never seen it before. I mean, I think I can do it. It's definitely a challenge. So right now, what do I have? I've got it automated to the point where this turns it into a liquid. It pipes it over here. It automatically purifies it. Then it valves it once it reaches 85% purity into here where it automatically pipes it over to get lasered. Now, what I could do I think my question is, once we do have a way of making the crystal, how would we be able to place it if we ran out? Uh, that I think I can manage. So, blaze rods, cap 70. So that's going to be cool. So let's let that cook. So while that's going, I'm going to think, right? Like, I could, if I had a valve and a tank... So I could say, seventy and seventy, six thousand apply. So what this should do? Oh, power! Right, right. I Burr. was in the process of doing that. Yeah, we're getting it restored. It's cool. I'm working on it. Got like a million RF at this point. Hopefully two million is enough, at least for now. So... He should not... This should fill up, and then... Yes. So I configured it so the back is disabled. Okay. So that it won't pipe energy up there. And the only place it'll send energy now is into this system. So what I could do then is have this go into here. So we might want some more item conduits. Speaking of item conduits, did you see exactly how I hooked up the warehouse to the, uh, to the main house? I did not. Yeah. Just carry your wrench down one of the roads and you'll see. outside in front of the house. I need to do something about that vacuum chest. Which one? Oh, the redstone one? Yeah. Every time I drop my item in here, like, an item that I drop goes, like, flying like a lunatic. <laughs> there it is. I got it back now.
There we go. All right, turn this. Always active. That's cool. All right. So what I could do then is say, so this is getting strength and efficiency. So we're going to need to feed more of this into here. So let's go down and behind this area. So what we're going to want to have is blaze dust going into here from item conduits. So let's also get filters. Basic item filter should do. So this will be insert filter blaze powder whitelist. So only blaze powder can be inserted into here. Then we're going to want a crafter. Actually, I don't want this to be in always active mode yet. Um, we're going to want to teach it how to make filters. Are we out of gravel? We shouldn't be. Are we out of gravel? Hold on. It is currently inaccessible to my advanced inventory panel. Uh. Oh yeah, we are out of gravel. Huh. How'd that happen? Oh uh, well, it kind of would explain, you know, what I'd been I used. I've been making a lot of facades. A lot of facades? Well, enough to get from you know from point A, aka our our house, to point B, which is the warehouse, which I was going to show you, but you got busy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I should probably get some more gravel. Uh, cobble converts into gravel, right? With the uh, mass writing? You can try. Sagma. But I need some ASAP. Uh, give me a second. So if I tell that to remember, it should remember what's in there. Cool. Yep, it works. I'll get awesome. some in there. Yeah, hook that up in the system for me. And then we're going to want item conduits to also work their way back here. There's some gravel in there right now. Okay. Do oh, I yeah. have brick conduit facades? Is that yours? I'm guessing that's yours. Maybe? Because I don't have any conduit facades that I need to use. Insert filter. I would say it's probably you. Filters. Right. Oh. There you go. I've been kind of meaning to automate this whole thing, so I'm kind of excited that T Love has challenged me to do so. Good. I would like to actually see this automated, especially automating it, making it, and then placing it when one's burnt out. That's pretty cool. Like recycles it or something. So that'll filter down to there. Then this will put it in here. It'll be 85, 10, 10. Then this will laser it until it gets to 70%, right? Um, for strength and efficiency. Then, you know what I might need, by the way? I don't know if it's recorded on metadata. It's probably recorded on MBT. Can you get me an advanced item filter from Ender.io? Can you craft that yep. for me? Thank you. That would be most kind, okay. So that's that, that's that. Then what I would probably want to do is purify this liquid again. So we'll let this drip down into a tank. So this is configured to only move once the strength and efficiency are at 70. So we'll make sure that's applied. And it is ignore redstone. So then we'll put a tank down. All right, there's one in the system. Thank you, sir. And then we're going to want another valve. You know what I'll probably want is another tank, or two more tanks. Another valve. Um, how much gravel did you need? Uh, a few stacks for now. That should be plenty in there. And another yeah, that's 276, you're pretty good.
Come on, recognize the machine frames there. Cool. So another purifier. So basically what we'll do is we'll have another tank here. So then when it's 70 whatever, right? So 70 strength and efficiency here, the purity will be low. It needs to be repurified. Um, so we will say tank purifier valve tank. Your purity level will have to be 85 and 70 and 70, let's say. And max millibuckets is 6,000, right? So that's basically what the process is gonna be. Cool. So now let's get a chest. And this can be in and out. We're going to filter it to insert gravel, sand, and coal. And eventually this will be hooked up to the main system, but as a temporary measure, it's going in here. Cool. So this will extract anything that's in here. So assume this would be normally hooked up to the system, right? So this can insert gravel, sand, and coal. Sand, coal, gravel goes in here for filter materials. And extract, always active. Now what I'm also going to do is say cobble here here and remember it. So what we should wind up with is when I, the one last thing I'm gonna need to do is and hopefully you guys are cool with seeing all this. We need to get the purifier going. So the purifier really only needs access to this for now, I think. So what we'll do is we'll just run this over here. Disabled. And that's cool, right? So that you can always mode active as well. So ideally, what we're gonna wind up with is when I set this guy to always active, he should automatically create filter material. And yes, the laser should also be taken care of. Sweet. You should be making filter material for us, which is cool. Sweet. And filters should be taken care of as well. And you extract always active and you insert we're going to filter you with filter materials as well even though that shouldn't really be necessary but nice cool so basically automatically crafting filter materials using sand and coal uh we're also going to need some conduits i forget what kind is down here but i think it's this one yes good this is one block that needs to be placed and now you're getting power good Sweet. All right, so once that hits 70% strength and efficiency, um, which it should do before the purity runs out, and I'm wondering if the quality is gonna affect how fast the purity runs down, but it should be okay. But we're gonna test it again with one that I didn't derp on the quality. Remember, that was a few episodes back. Um, but so far, let's see, half a percent for about half a percent. So, I mean, we only have 15 more to go, so purity should be okay. It's gonna be close.
I think it might be close, but I think we'll be all right. And again, quality might be affecting that. But my goal is going to be an 85% pure, 70% strength and efficiency. And if we get that, then I'll be cool with that. That should be automated enough for now. Oh, the other thing we're going to have to worry about is getting white crystals into here, which we can manage in a moment. I just want to make sure this gets turned off if we drop below the purity line too far. Just remember, if we hit 0% purity, I think it is, then we're in trouble. Wish there was a way to like detect this, but it should be quick. It should drain very quickly. You know what I could do is make it like 68. So then it should start dripping very quickly. Cool. Not quick enough, really, but... Why are you not moving down? You should be. Oh, because I made purity 10. Okay, yeah. Purity 0. Now it's going to continue going down. Good, 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 good. Okay, cool. All right, and now this thing is purifying, and... Um, probably going to want to have a chest here to catch the spent filters and we'll route them around in a second I'll probably just route them into this thing this filter material guy up here so that's gonna run and then in theory can I speed up this purifier a little bit that's good cool so that is running faster I wonder if Ender.io put a block on it, because this thing wasn't working on Ender.io machines. Ender.io might be actively blocking this machine's ability to function the staff of acceleration thing. But basically, and I'm going to make this 68685, but it's going to have to be 84 for now, because we're not going to get to 85% purity because of the quality, but eventually that will change. But let's see. So basically, this should stop in a second. Dun, 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 dun. Nice. So we'll make this 84 apply, and then he should valve into here, right? So now we should know that this is going to be 85% pure and 70% strength and efficiency, roughly. Cool. And then from there, we're going to pipe it up into the crystallizer. So what we're going to do probably going to wind up removing the liquid transfer node from here and instead you're gonna go to here you can go straight across and then straight up that should work so then we can remove this one and this one Instead, we'll go one, two, three, four, five. Did I have another liquid transfer node around here? I'm off by one. That's so annoying. Um, fluid conduit, pressurized fluid conduit. So you will be set to extract, always active. You set to insert, and you should be the orange. There we go, that should be going into there. And now this will make a new crystal for us. Sweet. All right, um, I'll be back in a second. I wanna prepare the next stage of this build. All right guys, we are back, and it's time to show you something that I don't think I've ever shown you in this mod. Dun, 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 dun. Don't mind me just breaking dense obsidian. not what I oh. to do. Well, dang. But it's not a big deal.
Oh, there we go. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Okay, so this block is called the pedestal. This I don't here? know in what way it needs to face. Okay. It might need to face the other direction. So I'm going to put it this way. Is there a white crystal inside that chest behind you? Yep. Nice. Okay, good. That's what I wanted to hear. Now, the pedestal does have an inventory, so we're going to need this here. Um, more. I don't think this is actually going to help with radiation at all, but more so for appearance's sake, could you make me a facade of dense obsidian? Sure. Thank you, sir. Got it. So the pedestal will automatically break used up crystals in front in front of it and place them into an inventory behind them. And then given an, a crystal inside the inventory, it'll place it in the world for you. Okay. Doesn't that sound ideal? Yes, it does. Very ideal. Right? I thought that sounded pretty ideal. So oh. what I'm gonna do... All right, I got the facade. Cool. Dense obsidian. There we go. So basically, I want to take this white crystal and I'm going to put it over here. And I'm going to in the infusing laser. I'm gonna get blaze powder again. Take out this filter and put this one in. And we're gonna put blaze powder and white crystal. Huh? We're gonna tell it to ignore NBT and metadata. So hopefully, I just wanna see that these guys actually have different because I don't want it to put a red crystal in there. That would be bad. So that's cool. F3H. So this is number 46660. Oh, that's not good. Five and MBT five tags. MBT 11 tag resonating, resonating crystal. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to tell it. I'm going to have to test this. So what I need to do is determine if there's a way to differentiate between a used up crystal and a not used up crystal. Because the last thing we want to have happen is have a red crystal land inside here because that will be a huge waste and it will get eaten up. Okay. So we're going to need some chests. That'll do. Clear this. You guys can go away. Item conduits. So if I put these guys next to each other, so this is just testing for direwolf. Uh, that is west. So we'll say west will be the extract, always active. East will be the insert. And I'm going to borrow you for a moment, Mr. Advanced Item Filter. West will be, uh, or we'll do it on the insert side just to be consistent with how this is going to work. All right, so if I tell it to match meta and NBT, um, this will of course go through and this won't. If I tell it to ignore metadata, see the problem is this is my, this MBT is gonna match because it's the same crystal. Now if I tell it to ignore NBT data, the red one goes across. So what I need is a depleted crystal. I might be able to deplete one. Strength, what's a really low strength? 1 1.8, 1 1.1, 0 0.96, 0 0.91, 0 0.64, 0 0.32. With 40% power, this might burn really fast. Let's see. So right, in theory, if I place this here, but at least it's stable. Yeah. Yeah. 
everything's sorted. How bad's radiation gonna be? Ah, eh, radiation's not terrible on this thing. So this is making 50 RF a tick. It's the radiation's climbing a little bit, but it's not really that bad. I am getting hunger already, but if I go outside. Is that in the crystal fine. chamber? Oh. Yeah. So watch what happens, right? So what this should do, because I want a I want a depleted crystal that's <laughs> different from the one I have. What? Okay. I was gonna yeah. say half here is this not really that big. It's not. It's one of the world gen ones that we had okay. in our system. That doesn't do much, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So like it doesn't generate much RF, but um, the radiation levels are not bad from it, and it's going to, like, burn out in a minute. So how about we come back in a minute here, guys, when this is burned out? Because I need a different white crystal to confirm that, like, matching metadata versus NBT, right? So we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back. So just for clarity's sake, I want to demonstrate something. Um, number one, you should notice that this is a different crystal. Um, I wanted to record the part where the pedestal broke it, and I missed that last time. So I just threw another crystal there because I just wanted you guys to see it. So in theory, what should happen is once this crystal turns white, aka it's out of power, it should automatically be broken by the pedestal and uh, dropped into the chest behind, um, which you can see there's already one back there. That's the one that I was using earlier, right? So now this should be at 2%. Um, also, I didn't run cable yet. Correct. Good. And you're not configured to extract yet. Good. That's cool. Um, now you're at one and a half percent. So things are moving along nicely. I'm getting hungry, which is fine. T love is back. Yes. How's right. it going? The joy of my leak still happening. That's yeah. how it's going. Really? Weird memory leak on T-Love's part. Not sure why. Blame T-Love. Can't figure it out. So this crystal's about to break. You watching? Are you watching? Oh, I'll watch it. i watch it. Oh, it broke. It broke all by itself. That's what I wanted to see. Yay. And it landed in the chest behind, which is what I wanted to see. Okay, cool. Now to figure out if I can filter this in some way. So red should not move in there because on the east side, the white crystal is good. Uh, oh, wait. Red did move in there. Okay. So what's filtered right now? East side... We are matching metadata and we're ignoring NBT. So if I put you in there, you in there, and you in there. Interesting. Now if I tell it to ignore metadata. One looks like light white and one's like dark gray. Yeah, I think it's the difference between like a custom made crystal and a world gen crystal. Ah, okay. Tell it to ignore MBT, it transfers them all over there. So that's gonna be tricky. Um, this is manageable though. This is manageable. I can work around this issue. Um, so what we're gonna wanna do is configure it so that when we pipe out of the crystallizer, we're going to pipe out in uh, a different colored channel than not. Um, so that's okay. I think the challenge I have is like, how am I going to be able to make this look good? <laughs> have fun. Oh, goodness. So we really don't need to filter this. But what we are going to have to do is make this insert color something like brown. Cool. So this will be brown. And then... This insertion will be brown. No, no. This will be blue. So we'll insert on blue. This will extract on brown. So we'll extract the white ones on brown. We'll okay. insert the good ones on blue. And this will have an extract on the blue side. So we'll just put an item conduit here for now. Not where I want it to be. That'll do. So this is the crystallizer. So this will be extract on blue. Always active. Cool? Cool. Um, so can I? OK, I can put that resonating crystal back in there. Perfect. All right, good. So I'm going to run these item conduits. <laughs> 
So this should be connected now to this whole system. That's good. This looping over to here, that's cool. So I'm probably just going to run this straight across to here. Disabled on the pump. We don't need any items going into that. Disabled on there. And then we'll run these right up to here. All right. So in theory now, nice. We just heard the crystal place. And beautiful. All right, that's what I wanted to see. 11,000 RF a tick. We should be filling up that thing pretty quickly now, Mr. T Love. Um, mm. Now, if I were to place a burnt out crystal in here and configure this guy to active without signal, or always active as it were. So you should be extracting on the brown. This should be insert on brown. Add that, tell it to ignore MBT and metadata. And then it disappeared. Nice. Okay, can you tell me what the blue line says inside that laser? You know what I'm talking about? Blue line, the lasers. Yeah. It's the block with the lever on it. Okay. Uh, 4,706. How about uh, now? 20,000. 13,000. Nice. That's what I want to see. All right, cool. Uh, we'll be back in a minute. All right, guys. So I'm going to call that the wrapping up point for this episode. Um, but we will come back next episode. Uh, let's see, how's my radiation down here? Not terrible, a little bit high, but it's fine. It's, it's what I would expect. So um, this should be, in theory, a functional system, T-Love. Right, I love it. In theory. The only thing that's not been automated at this point is placing the appropriate amount of crystals in here. But in theory, you put 30 crystals in here. Um, and what it should do is smelt into the tank above, automatically move into this tank, automatically be filtered with the purifier, which is automatically crafting filters from here. Uh, all we have to do is hook up this system to our uh, main system, but basically automatically crafting filters for the purifiers. Once they hit 85% purity, regardless of the strength and efficiency, it'll drop down into this tank below, which will then be placed into the tank that the laser's on. The laser will fire blaze powder until it gets to a point of 70. Once it gets to that point, and I might make this like 67. That should be fine. Um, it'll then um, filter down in the tank below where it will be purified again by a second purifier, collecting the spent filter materials, auto crafting, purifying material into here. Once it's done and we get to a strength of and purity. So purity 85, strength 67, 67. It'll go into this tank, at which point it will be pumped into here, where it will be turned into a hardened crystal, the solidified crystal will be automatically transferred over to the pedestal. And the pedestal, once the crystal in front breaks and turns white, it'll automatically break it, put it in the chest, and the chest will send it back over to the infusing laser to fill up the blue thing. How cool is that? So that should be fully automated. Uh, we're going to test it next episode, though. So for now, Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, for now, take it easy.